let's talk about relative distance of geographic data. Let's look at two versions of the same spatial pattern. So let's say that we have these points. All right, I'm going to make it obvious that we are dealing in the exact same pattern, right? So if we calculate these two things, if we calculate the standard distance of each of these, it's going to be the same. Remember the standard distance is we find the mean center, and then we find from there the radius of a circle that when drawn around that center contains 68% of our data points, right? The standard distance here, the standard distance here is going to be exactly the same as the standard distance here because they're the same pattern, right? But what if instead of just calculating the standard distance, we wanted to look at how dispersed these data were relative to their study site, their, the boundaries of their study area. So let's say that this pattern has a very small study area, but this pattern has a very large study area. Okay, their standard distances are still going to be the same. Even though quite clearly, this one occupies a much greater proportion of its study area than does this one, right? So to take that into account, we're going to talk about a very of a thing here called the relative distance, which I'm just going to abbreviate as relative dist. And its equation is just the standard distance of the data divided by the area of a circle, no, excuse me, divided by the radius of a circle that has the same area as the study site. So I would convert this study area, this square, I would figure out what its area is, then find a circle that fits over the top of it and find the radius of that circle. So that I'm dividing a radius, the standard distance, by the radius of a circle whose area is equal to that of the study area. And in that case then, we're gonna have two very different values here, right? This is going to have, the one over here on this side is going to have a much larger relative distance because this standard distance occupies a relatively large portion of the study site. And this is going to have a much smaller relative distance because the area of its standard distance occupies a much smaller, relatively smaller portion of its study area. Okay, so it's a way of looking at how much of the study area is occupied by the few points that we're studying. Let's learn how to calculate a relative distance using R. So I've got a bunch of lines of code here at the beginning, but all of this, <clears throat> sorry, all of this is just me creating a data set to illustrate what we're going to do here, okay? So I have uh, three spatial objects here, a spatial points object that, that contains just a set of randomly created 10 points. I have the outlines of a big study area and the outlines of a small study area, and both of these are saved as spatial polygons. So I could just plot that, and let's um, use the dashed line because we can. So this is our big study area, the dashed plot, dashed line. And I can plot in the same area our small study area. Small and LTY will do th three this time, so we're dealing with dots, and add that. Okay, so there's our small study area, and in the middle we have our points. And I will set the point character to 19 so that I have the nice filled in circles, okay? So on this example, I have the same point pattern, but in one we'll calculate the relative distance for this small study area. And then in this one, which is four times as large, we'll calculate the relative distance for that one, okay? For both of these, we need an equation for calculating the standard distance, which I have just created right there. And we've already calculated our mean center, right? I can add um, the mean center in there so that we know where that is. Also make that 19, and this time we'll set the color to red so that we can see it, okay? So here's our mean center. And um, the standard distance which I will just call st.dist. Um, we're going to call the function that we created there before. This should be the coordinates of the points. So our standard distance in this case is 2.237. And if I use the symbols command, um, here we'll put in the center point. I want it to be a circle. It'll be equal to st.dist. I'll add that and set inches to false. Sorry, that needs to be a capital T inches defaults and I will make the color 
red so that it matches, okay? So there's our standard distance. <clears throat> now the relative distance is simply the standard distance. So um, for the small study area, it is the standard distance divided by the radius of a circle that has the same area as the study area. So I'm going to use, since these are saved as spatial polygons, I can use the RGeos library. And I can use G area of the small study area. So it should be, I think when I created it was 10 by 10, so it should be 100. Okay, let's say 100 meters. I divide that by pi and take the square root of it. And that should then be the radius of a circle that has a hundred square meter area. Area small divided by pi. Yep, I think that's right. So that gives us a standard distance of 0 0.396. For the small or the large study area, it's just the same thing. I have the standard distance divided by the square root of the area of the large study site divided by pi. So let's see the area of the large study site. Oh, not large. They're called the big. Should be 400. I divide that by pi and take the square root. So the radius there should be 11.284. And when I divide that into the standard distance, I get a value of 0 0.198. So about 40% <clears throat> on my graphic, about 40% of the area, or not quite, 30, what was it, 39, almost 40% of the radius of this circle is about 40% of the radius of a circle that has an area equal to the smaller square. So it occupies a pretty sizable portion of the study area. This big square, however, most of this area is empty, and I only have points right there in the middle, so it's only about 20%. So the relative distance is a very good way to measure how disperse your point pattern is across your entire study site.